Hello everyone, welcome back to Momentos de Tecnología, Technology Moments. In this opportunity, we're encouraging you to do this project by yourself. This is a do-it-yourself product. It is a Dahua Pentabrid XVR. What it does is basically a DVR, a video recorder for security cameras. This is the 4 terabyte hard drive that we're gonna use. And this is the OEM Dahua cameras that we're gonna use. Uh, basically a 2.8 millimeter security camera which actually has a little wider angle than the 3.6 this one is the DVR that we're gonna use you can actually get it for a very very good price uh, in many of the retailers that they have this one is the hard drive that we're just about to install uh, these ones are the ports that you're going to find in the back of the product it has a VGI, HDMI, the gigabit Ethernet it has all the 32 uh, wired connections. Remember that those 32 wired connections can be exchanged for 16 IP cameras. This one are the screws that we're going to have to remove. Four screws in the back of the product to remove the, the upper lid. These ones are the connectors. This one is the power supply of the unit. The power connector for the hard drive, the data cable. It has a small mouse. Uh, it has the network cable right here and the screws for holding and securing your hard drive to the chassis good once we remove the lid this is what we have inside this one is the motherboard uh, it looks very simple but remember that we have had to have a very very big evolution in terms of technology to get such a great DVR 32 channel full HD in just this simple and reduce the space these are the headers for the two HD to the for the two hard drives and the power connector for the two hard drives once we secure the hard drive from the bottom up we secure the um, the connectors and we tighten the screws so we can have our hard drive secure we connect it to the motherboard we have one connector over here and we will have one of them free in order for us to upgrade or to have our capacity extended a little bit more. In this case, we can have four terabytes, or if we had another hard drive, we can have eight terabyte capacity as we have another slot available. Good. Once we have the, the connected our hard drive, we're going to close, put the back, uh, put the lid back on, and we're going to fire up this DVR. Okay, we're going to uh, accelerate a little bit the video right here because you are going to see it this this is, takes about 30 to 40 seconds we're going to speed it up we're going to um, configure it in Spanish some of you may may, may think that it, it is not gonna be useful for you now you're going to actually uh, improve your Spanish just with looking a little bit uh, at this video basically we're going to accept the terms and conditions right here by using this checkbox most of the things you are just going to understand it. Uh, remember, in this case, um, I am at UTC minus five. It is very important in terms of security cameras. I do not get tired of telling you and advising. Be careful with the time. Uh, we create a username and password for the admin, and we draw a, an unlocking pattern. Okay, basically, uh, it's very simple, very quickly. I do not recommend to use this recovery. Uh, option of the secret questions or the supposedly secret questions as everybody knows which one is your favorite book the name of your pet or whatever so we are just not going to use it and we're going to click next and uh, i do not like for my devices to update automatically so i usually uncheck it but for you it may be a good option Right here, we're going to have the name of the of the XVR. In this case, I'm going to put XVR number one or XVR one. Uh, it has to be unique on your network, as as uh, as well as this number or DVR number. Uh, we're not going to change anything else, as you are going to see. These uh, XVRs are plug and play, and they are going to detect which standards your cameras are using. Something very important before continuing right here is setting up the correct time. It is very important to set the correct time, even if you're going to use the NTP server, which you are going to activate, of course. We're going to try to update it right here, the NTP server. Uh, it says that it has failed. Uh, we're going to go back later on this video, back to this part to see which why this happened. Remember that all, all, all these settings you can be changed 
from the configuration menu later on. Okay, next. And here is the problem why it didn't update. Uh, it has the, uh, the, the DHCP was, um, was not enabled, so it was not receiving an IP address from my router. So in this case, I'm going to enable it and we're going to leave those Google DNS. Leave it like that. If you don't know what the DNS is, just leave it like that. 8888 or 8844 for the Google DNS servers. These are the QR codes that you are going to want to save. If you want, you can take a picture with your phone of this and have it on your records. This is how you're going to gain access to your uh, DVR from uh, from the from the app that you're going to install in your phone in your tablet or whatever it is going to have the serial number so it is going to find when you are accessing through p2p or peer-to-peer -peer networking uh, that way is going to help you in that matter actually this is kind of of a help you're getting from the from the provider the device is going to register with the servers and it is going to give you uh, the, the access through the internet without having a, a static IP address at your home. Uh, this one is the coding of each one of the of the of the channels. You're going to leave them uh, as they are. As I told you, these DVRs configure themselves automatically once you connect the camera, and you're going to see it in a few moments. Right here, the same thing. You're just going to leave it like that, and right here it will tell us when the hard drive is full. Yeah, no, right here it says you're going to overwrite sobre escribir. This overwriting is very important as you're never going to run out of space. This one right here is going to give you the opportunity to configure at which time your hard drive is going to be um, recording, recording manually or recording because it found an alarm or it has a motion sensitivity um, activate it. You can do it in many ways. You can do it just by drawing the line, just by clicking right here on the settings menu and you can check for each one of them right here, check the time, uh, the alarm and of course right here you can copy it to all of the cameras at once. Okay, You can delete one of the days right here. Let's copy it to all of them if you want and press OK. OK, next. Once you finish, this one is the photo instant. Okay, so some, something like, like that. And it gives you thanks for buying our product. And that's all. Um, we're going to start right now with uh, setting up your system by creating this test cable uh, using these plugs that you can buy at an early, any electric store. You can buy them through eBay. Uh, they are very, very, very useful as you can just chop off the adapter plug or you can use the one that is included with uh, with the power supply adapter right here you can see that uh, the UTP cable has four pairs four pairs of cables that are gonna let you uh, wire for uh, two cameras two for videos and two for uh, power remember you have to have a standard if you're going to use orange for the video always use orange for the video uh, in this case brown for power supplies brown for power supplies but always remembering that you have to have a polarity okay so the white cables are going to use the positive wiring and the darker ones are going to have the negative uh, wire the same for the the video balloons the video balloons also have to have a polarity basically this may be the most important thing when talking about cameras and wiring cameras. The video balloon as well as the power supply have uh, electrical polarity, okay? So the, the positive cable and the negative cable have to go depending on the, on, the, on the scheme that you have just organized. This one is the cable that we're gonna use to test the camera. As you can see, it's a three or foot, um, three or four foot cable. Uh, we have two pairs right here in standby for another camera in case that it was uh, longer right here we're going to connect this camera directly to the DVR on top of the table this is something that I recommend test all your cameras before uh, putting them on the ceiling uh, climbing up the ladder three four meters in order for you to notice that maybe the camera was not correctly installed and you start wondering if 
it was the cabling or if it was the camera that was defective. This one is the power supply that we usually use. Uh, in this opportunity, I'm going to use one for each one of the cameras, which is actually going to look like a mess over here. Organization is the key when you are going to cable or wire uh, digital surveillance cameras. You can also buy a 10 amp uh, power supply in order for you to to connect more cameras right here you can see channel 14 channel 14 is detecting the camera and that's why i said that this device was more like a plug and play as you can see it just detects the video source and the video feed the format and it just starts working right here i'm using this old monitor uh, through uh, the sub connector and you see that it just looks just fine. It's, it's, there, are, there are many, many connectors or monitors. You can plug a 52 inch uh, TV through the HDMI connector and else. Uh, as you can see right here, we're just starting. But once you have 20, 25, 30 cameras connected, this is gonna look like a mess if you don't get, orga if you don't get organized. So our recommendation is have this uh, label makers, connect all the cables, manage all the cables if you want you can get a, a a bigger power supply a more powerful power supply uh, and remember that you might want to get a one amp free for each one of the cameras at first you might th you might think that uh, one amp is more than enough for a, for a camera but remember that at night the cpu of the camera inside is going to draw more power from the power supply so you can centralize to a 20 amp uh, or two 10 amp power supplies in order for you to get not so messy with the cabling inside the, the rack, okay? I was telling you a few moments ago that the most important thing when talking about surveillance cameras was the time. Believe me, it is the most important thing. People come up to you and tell you that uh, they had a problem at this time yesterday. When you check up the videos and you go to the recordings, you might want to get sure that the footage that you are watching was from the time that is on top of this of the screen. So it is very, very important. And the most important thing besides uh, having the correct time is, of course, being able to watch the camera remotely. This is something that Dahua and Higvision have done a great job. You're going to get the GDMSS Plus app from your app store and you're going to download it and configure it to access your... We have another video like this one for Higvision cameras. Uh, they are very, very similar in terms of configuration, very easy to manage. Uh, maybe this one is a little bit easier to install. So uh, I recommend this product very much. Okay, so once you install the GDMSS Plus, mm, what you might want to do is have the QR code that we had a few moments ago taking the picture off. Okay, so let's open the, the app. We're going to give the permissions in order for the app to access the, the memory card, take pictures, store the videos taken, and whatever. We select the country in which we're going to be running this app. Uh, and we're going to go, uh, it has uh, basically four categories, home, device, message, and uh, the personal configuration. We're going to go to devices and we're going to go to the upper uh, to the upper right part of the screen and we're going to scan the QR code with the SN slash scan. It is going to identify the serial number. You're going to check that it is a DVR or, a, or XVR and you're gonna need of course the username and the password that you provided the system with at the beginning of the of the process. So you're going to give like a friendly name, the device name, for example, Office One or Center or Down South or First Floor, however you want to call it. This one doesn't have to do anything with the configuration or the access. It is just the name. You save it and voila, you have access to your cameras. You check right here, 4, 9, 16 or 20 something cameras that you have right there and you're gonna have them right in front of you. It is a very simple to use app. I recommend uh, that you mm, spend a little bit of time checking out the menus and working out this app a little bit so you can take pictures, you can record uh, directly in your phone, you can access recordings, you can do so many things that 
you can check it out. It's very easy and very powerful to use. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, you liked it. Um, we encourage you to do it yourself. Do it yourself. Don't be afraid. Just watch the polarity, check the time, and connect it to the internet with the DHCP activated. That's, those are the key parts of this video in order for you to work. Okay, so see you next time in the next technology moment. Remember that we do not have any link to the brands that we discuss over here. We just like to share our experience with technology. See you next time.